We greet all of you tonight. We're very thankful that you're here. Welcome those who are on live stream with us also. We're in the book of Amos, <clears throat> which is a challenging book if you don't have a lot of uh, understanding about God. It's not a, not a popular book, except to those that have a real heart for God, but you're being exposed here to to God, as you, as all of you must know, that God is the theme of the Scripture, Amen. and He's expounded most thoroughly through the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son and the Savior of the world. When we read texts like this, we're finding out that that God. He's, a, he's not an idea, he's a person. Yeah. And he, there's certain things he loves and there's certain things he hates. There's certain people that he is very much attracted to and there's certain people he's repelled by. This is God. Now, we're talking about God. And there's enough examples of this in Scripture we shouldn't have to... Like open this up unless a person just doesn't know anything at all about Scripture, and if they don't, then that's their commission is to become have a working knowledge of the Word of God. So the text of Scripture we're into tonight has been a false priest who actually served idols, a Jew. And he has told Amos to shut up. And in our text, Amos is going to answer him. You know, God says that we ought to know how to answer every man. Don't ever, don't ever fear and quake when people criticize you for for your faith. Talk about. Ask God to make you bold. Get right up and speak. Now, he's, Amaziah has contradicted what Amos has declared. Amos said, God's bringing the hammer down. He's going to do it on the king. He's going to do it on the people. And Israel's going into captivity. And Amaziah has contradicted that and told Amos to go home to Judah, and not to prophesy anymore in Bethel, which was a seat of an idol, golden calf there, and to go back to Judah where he belongs and stay there. He says that Amos has intruded into Israel. He's come to the king's court and to the sacred places. And he's delivered this message, and it's just not appropriate, he told him, to tell this in these sacred political and religious places. Don't prophesy here anymore. Now, will, will the man of God answer this challenge? Will he just pack his bags and go home, or what will he do? One of the disadvantages of living in a society that's godless and one that has retrogressed is you forget how holy people have responded to challenges. You kind of become a spiritual panty waste, if you'll excuse that expression. That means you don't have any nerve. These old men of God, they, they weren't that way. God's going to not let this pass, as we're going to see. We know from Jesus, he answered his critics. He just didn't bow his head and cry and go home. When his critics criticized him, he answered them. He did it in a very uh, curt fashion. Jeremiah prophesied against Pasher, one of his critics, <laughs> told him what, was, what God was going to do to him, which happened. 
All of this confirms that when God's messengers speak and they're rejected, it's not overlooked in heaven. Now, there's a, there's a word Jeremiah spoke that's pertinent right here. It's found in Jeremiah 26, 4 through 6, and here's what it says. Thus saith the Lord, If you will not hearken to me to walk in my law, which I have set before you, and to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, then will I make the house of Shil like Shil house like Shiloh and will make this city as cursed to all the nations of the earth. That's my response, God says. Yeah. <laughs> you don't listen to me. You have the nerve not to listen to me. I'm going to destroy your city. Yeah. I'm going to tell you ahead of time so when it happens, you'll know. <clears throat> That's God. <clears throat> Amen. You may have five views about how loving God is and how He cares for everybody and all that. But you better make room for this. God will not overlook a person ignoring what He says. And our nation is filled up to the top yeah. with people that do this. Amen. The churches are filled up yeah. with people that do this. God doesn't take to it very well at all. So when it comes from to divine communication, something that comes from heaven, it's always weighty. Nothing is trivial. See, we live in an era of entertainment and all this, and so you're just a bunch of trivia is going on all the time. It's stuff that isn't viewed as life and death. They just trivia. See, God doesn't deal with trivia things that don't have a consequence. Many professing Christians feel as though they have a right to neglect what God says. They can say to God, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be holy. Even though you told me to be holy like you're holy, I don't want to be holy. And they think that God doesn't think anything about this. But he does, as we will see. They've treated the word of God as though it wasn't serious enough to pay attention to. All right, now our text tonight is Amos 7, verses 14 through 17. It'll conclude this seventh chapter. This is Amos answering Amaziah that has told him to get out of there, stop prophesying in Bethel, and go back to Judah where you belong, and don't prophesy here anymore. All right, this, now here's his answer. Then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took, that's the word, in the Hebrew that's the word, the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord, the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, Prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Now I'm going to warn you ahead of time, this next verse is nothing pretty about it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, thy wife shall be an harlot in the city. And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. And thy land shall be divided by line. And thou shalt die in a polluted land. And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his hand. No might beads. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that, that, that's strong stuff. Yeah. That's how serious it is to reject God's word. It, that's how serious it is. Amen. Well, actually, it's even more serious now because he's spoken to us through his son. It's a yeah. wider revelation yeah. 
It's a more focused revelation, and it has eternal consequences. So the revelation now is more serious than it was then, not, not because it, God meant it more, but because it covers more, yeah. uh -huh. and it's more in detail. Amos said to Amaziah, the other version say he answered, like immediately. He didn't go home and study and pray, read a little bit, then come back. This is a right now answer. He answered Amaziah. Amos gave this answer. The one Bible version says Amos responded or Amos replied. Here's what he said. I was no prophet. Let me tell you what some of the versions, these are some of our translators, some of the things that they've offered to us. Well, this is pretty good. Amos said, I was not a prophet. The New American Standard Bible and the New Revised Standard Verse says, I am not a prophet. Now, as soon as we find out who did that, we need to put them out of work. Yeah. Amos was a prophet. Yes, amen. And those Bibles say he wasn't a prophet. I am not a prophet. The New Living Bible says, I'm not a professional prophet. I'm quoting you direct from some Bibles that you can buy down at the For All bookstore. I am not a professional prophet. The Jewish Bible says, I'm not trained as a prophet. God's Word Bible says, I'm not a disciple of the prophets. Amplified Bible says, I was no, I was no prophet by profession. Well, I like exactly what he said. I'm not a prophet. I think he meant the same thing. He wasn't a prophet like Jeremiah was. He was born a prophet from the mother's womb. Jeremiah 1.5, see? I wasn't that way. I wasn't that kind of prophet. That's what I think he meant. He, he lived to his adult years before he became a prophet. He had no earthly reason to deliver a prophecy or to pretend like he was a prophet. He wasn't made a prophet. He wasn't like Samuel. He grew up, grew up as a young boy in the tabernacle, and he was a prophet from very young. Now, it says I wasn't. I wasn't a prophet. So you're not hearing something. I just didn't uh, hire out maybe to, because that's what I am. You know, when it said that God sent the prophets. Which 2 Chronicles 24 19 says, He sent the prophets. We're to understand they were not professionally trained prophets. That's not what that means. Here's the thing let me see if I can find some professionally trained prophets and I'll send them. You became a prophet when God sent you. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's right. You weren't a prophet before that. The same with preachers. You become a preacher when God sends you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How shall they preach except they be trained, mm -hmm. sent? Mm -hmm. The thing that qualifies the prophet is his calling and his message. Mm -hmm. If a person has, a, has been called by God, so how can I tell if I'm called by God? Well, you do have to work at it to know whether you are or not. A prophet has an inclination to prophesy. A prophet has something to say. And a prophet has the opportunity to say it. Now, when those three things get together, the inclination the desire, the opportunity, and the added time to speak it, then when those three get together, then you know, yeah. <laughs> you know you're calling. There's some people that want, they want to preach, but they don't have anything to say. Uh, yeah. We've got a lot of those. Mm -hmm. There's some people who want to preach, got something to say, but don't have a chance to say it. Uh -huh. See, yeah. Don't have an opportunity to say it. 
Some people have opportunity, but they don't have anything to say. <laughs> so when those three get together, just a kind of a practical test. So I, I'm, I, wa I was no prophet. I am now, but I wasn't a prophet. Yeah. Not by birth, not by training, not by so forth. Yes. I, I take it that what, what Amos is, is kind of leading up to here is he's kind of saying to Amaziah, I'm not here just like for recreation <laughs> it's Friday. or because I just wanted to come up here and cause trouble. I, why do you think I'm here, Amaziah? I'm here because God sent me here. That's the only reason I'm here. If, if God hadn't sent me here, I'd still be watching sheep and picking fruit. That's right. Amen. He continues on the same line that Brother Jesus said. Uh, neither was I the son of a prophet. I was I wasn't, for instance, like brought up in the school of the prophets, like some people that dumb young men that lived in Elijah and Elisha's day. Yeah, yeah. The sons of the prophets, they got together, see? And the, they had prophets like Elijah and Elisha to help train them. Samuel was brought up by Eli the priest, but I, I wasn't like that. I had no earthly advantage. Therefore, I didn't have an ability to be a prophet, as Jesus just said, well, I, would, I wouldn't be here yeah, right. if I wasn't really a prophet. Yeah. Well, what were you, uh, Amos? Well, I was, I was a herdman. Yeah. Those are the kind of people the Egyptians, you know, loathed. These type of people. I was a herdman. Other versions say I was a sheep herder or breeder. I was a sheep breeder. The NIV says I was a shepherd. The Jerusalem Bible says I own sheep. The Douay Reims version says I am I am a herdsman. Remember, he said I was, not I am. Yeah. I am a herdsman. God's Word Bible says I am a rancher. The Apostolic Bible says I was a I'm a herder. I raise cattle. I've been shepherding. Well, the word herdman, I was interested, always is the last resort. You try and find out what the word actually means. A herdman, as I understand it in the Hebrew, means a tender of oxen and a keeper of sheep. So he's what we would call a rancher. <laughs> Had oxen and sheep. That's what I was. That's what I was. I don't know if he would, but they ordered to ask him, was that, what were you? <clears throat> For you became this priest of the golden calf. And I was a gatherer of sycamore fruit. Sycamore fruits, wild figs. Not cultured figs, wild figs. Not cultivated figs, wild figs. Not a fig orchard. Wild figs. I just I gathered wild figs. The tender sycamore fruit. As I understand it was small and delicate. And I gathered those wild figs. I gathered for maybe to sell or something like that. But I was a gatherer. When they weren't like big, they were little. You can get figs, they call them mission figs now, but they're real little. I gathered uh, sycamore, wild wild figs. He probably gathered them in that area from what it sounds like, or maybe it was on, on his property, whatever, but that's what he did. They grew on large, uncultivated trees. They were one of these trees that were big, big horizontally there. Gathered yeah, sycamore fruit, <clears throat> wild figs. Now I said that that's what I was. I used to, I'm not that now. I'm a now, I'm not that. I'm a prophet now. But I used to, that's what I used to be. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. I was I wasn't in bed sleeping when the Lord called me. I wasn't on a vacation in Samaria when the Lord called me. I was busy following the sheep. The Lord 
took me. <clears throat> the New Living Translation says, he called me away from my flock. Or he took me from caring for the flock, the Living, living Bible says. One verse says, he told me to leave my flocks. Well, we're familiar with that. Jesus says, come follow me. He had to leave the fishing trade. He right, yeah. said to Matthew, come follow me. He had to leave his table of where he collected taxes. Believe me when I tell you this. When God calls you, you got to leave something. Yes, amen. Amen. It's your business what you leave. You, it's your business to know whether your, uh, your vocation changes. All of a sudden, what you did for a living becomes an avocation. It's a side. I mean, it may be 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I had one that was 100 hours a week, but it was my part-time job. I had to learn to do a lot in a short time. And you can't. It's amazing what you can learn to do that. The word translated took, I was interested in that. <laughs> I figured it was something like apprehended. Paul said, I want to apprehend that for which I was apprehended. I figured that's what it meant, and it does. The word means to take, get, fetch, lay hold of, seize, receive, acquire, snatch, take away, procure. <laughs> that's what it means. So the Lord just took him. I don't think it was physically. It could have been physically. One time he took one prophet by the hair of his head and transported him to another part of the country. So God could do this, but this, he probably knew that like Elisha did, he was plowing with 12 yoke oxen, and when the Lord called him, that was the end of that. He's explaining why he's there, see. This is why I'm here, Amaziah. I'm not about to listen to you. I really don't care what you think about this. When I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit, all right, I might have listened to you a little bit, but I'm not that anymore. I'm a prophet now. Yes. I couldn't help but small carol here when you said, the Lord took me as I followed the flock. Um, we want to be found working when the Lord returns. Right. Amen. 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 And I, you'll find that even when you're called into the kingdom, when you're called into Christ, you're always called when you're busy. That's when you're called. You just kind of analyze your own call, but you'll yeah. find that was the case. Yes. It sounds a lot like Paul's uh, yeah. answer as well. When he was uh, giving the giving the answer for his his calling and his hope, he, he answered a lot in the same way. That's he's, right. He's pointing to the fact that God God chose and God mm -hmm. uh, in, in stated him stated him you know put him into the the ministry. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. I won't I won't go into it at this time, but I remember when I was called. I was, I was 16 years old, and I knew I'm going to mow the word of God and preach. It didn't make any difference what anybody counseled me to do. I just knew. I gave a testimony to it in church. The preacher was a sensitive man. I told him, he said, you need to bear witness to that, testify, and have people lay hands on you. So I did. People laid hands on me set me apart <laughs> I knew just I knew what I was going to do was never a question how I made my living all right I had to work that out at first I thought I could work out my living preaching <laughs> then I soon found out that wasn't the, that wasn't the way but now if I had remained as a salaried preacher now, I preached for large churches before I was 20 years old. So I could have stayed there. Yeah, I would had to make some sacrifice. But if I had done that, we wouldn't have this house. 
and we wouldn't be meeting here. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't have afforded Benjamin's cancer surgery. Mm -hmm. It all worked out uh, yes, amen. Amen. very well. But it was a matter of education. I had to learn how the Lord was. Yes. Amos is declaring what God has done and yes, setting sir. him apart. He's he's setting himself apart from Amaziah also. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And Amaziah, as a priest of Bethel, no doubt was uh, if he, was, he was getting some personal profit mm -hmm. from that. And Amos left his prophet, so to speak, to become a prophet. That's right. Amen. And so he's he's bringing to light. Who is going by whose authority here? Amen. What what I the the authority by which Amaziah was coming was not actually the authority of God, though he he claimed to be a prophet. Yeah. But Amos was coming truly in the will and word of God. Amen. I found that uh, when I was at a, a religious institution of learning, higher higher learning that there were some people there that recognized what a real call was. They yeah. weren't the majority, but there were some yeah. some there that encouraged me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they helped to kind of knock some of the rough edges yeah. off and that sort of thing. Yeah. There's a great amount of confidence and assurance that can arise when a person can identify their call. Oh, yes. Amen. I mean, when they, can, when they can reason back and they can, because, because, um, I mean, nobody can do this for you, but but, but when you, when you know that, yeah. now see now there, when the hard times come and they will come, but do you 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 know your reason on your calling? He he called me. He he yeah. he he put me in this work, and now he's going to protect me, take care of me, provide for me. That is, if you're faithful, if you make your calling election sure, God will be there. He won't he won't let you go. Mm -hmm. When you're like all of God's callings aren't attended by financial support. Uh -huh. yeah. Some are callings within the context of an assembly, uh -huh. and there's something you can do that needs to be done, maybe a timely word, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, whatever. Uh -huh. When you're called to do that, don't hesitate. Yeah, amen. Don't back up and think I'm not able to do it. Uh -huh. If you've got the ability to edify God's people, get your mouth open. Because yes. God puts you for it. God didn't put you. There's no watchers, mm -hmm. spectators, so yeah. forth, in the body of Christ. Between the lines here, Amos is telling Amaziah, should I obey God or rather me. than man? <laughs> That's right. Or yeah. Should we obey man rather than God? He knows that God called me. He took me. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a call, That's come, right. follow me. That's and he right. knows if I deny that, it's not going to go well for me. Amen. Mm -hmm. And notice, yeah. Amaziah said, don't prophesy anymore in Bethel. Yeah. Amos says, the Lord said, go and prophesy unto my people Israel. Be a prophet to my people, some versions read. <clears throat> Prophesy over my people, another version reads. We know from the prophecy itself that the whole of the people of Israel were included, Judah and Israel. Remember, they were, two, they were split into two kingdoms because of Solomon. God took the kingdom out of Solomon's hand because as wise as he was, he was dumb. I mean, to have all 700 wives and a 1,000 concubines and built houses of worship to idols and promoted the worship of Ashtaroth. Yeah. He said, I'm going to take the kingdom away from you, and he gave it to his son, and he, his kingdom split during that son into Judah, two tribes, Israel, ten tribes. We know that God had a controversy with the whole whole body of people and Judah was included as is in Amos prophecy there's two verses of rebuke to Judah but the burden of the transgression lay with Israel the ten tribes so
So he commences a rebuke of Israel in chapter 2 and verse 6, and it continues through the conclusion of Amos chapter 9, verse 14. So he said, prophesy Israel's where these calves were. So we know that though the prophecy was to the whole of the race of Israel, the burden of it fell on Israel, the ten tribes, and they would go into captivity first. They'd be judged first. So here's what you said, Amaziah. You said, don't prophesy. The Lord said, prophesy. Now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. Now, therefore, now he doesn't wait to deliver this word. He responds immediately to the word of Amaziah. Now, this is another example of the Lord giving his messengers what to say without lengthy preparation. Here's what he said, Jesus, what Jesus said to his disciples. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts. Settle it. Settle it in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. To your critics he's talking about. Yeah. Not what you shall preach. He doesn't say, don't meditate before what you're going to preach. Yeah. He, doesn't, <laughs> he, doesn't say, he doesn't say that. There are some of you who believe that. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's not what he says. What you shall answer, for I'll give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist. That's what Amos is experiencing. He's experiencing God right on the fly. Gives him what to say. Of course, only those speaking for the Lord, this isn't promised to anybody else, only those speaking for the Lord and encountering opposition or resistance because they're speaking for the Lord, they're the only people that will experience this. Amen. Other people, you got to dig it out. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Now, I do not believe this was a mindless presentation. Like, come out of his mouth and then Amos said, Can somebody tell me what I said? I was under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I don't know what I said. There are people who do this today. Now, I'm, and I, yes, I'm mocking them. That's just what I'm doing. There are people who do this today. They don't know what they said, but they had a word from God. That's not, that's not what this is all about here. He knew what he said. Here's what happened. On the fly, because God was in it, he gathers from the re deep reservoir of truth, mm -hmm. takes experience, his experience mixed, mingles it in there. He's able to draw a valid conclusion and deliver an insightful word all on the fly. God, God enabled him to do that. Amen. Now, if you are speaking publicly and you encounter some kind of opposition or feedback, God can still do this. Yes. And you pray, you, some of you have experienced it, I already know. Yeah. You've experienced this, and this is marvelous. This isn't intended to, to supplant meditation. Mm -hmm. you, you still need to meditate, still need to learn, mm -hmm. study, this sort of thing. But this is talking about an unforeseen thing arises. You weren't able to see this coming. But you're not at a disadvantage when you're with God, you're speaking for God. You're not at a disadvantage when something rises you didn't expect. Amen. God can walk you through it. Hear thou the word of the Lord. No. Amos, this is, Amos is God's mouthpiece now. That hear the word of the Lord, that's mentioned at least 35 times in Scripture. Hear, what it means is focus on this. <coughs> Concentrate on this. Don't let anything distract you from what's being said. Hear thou the word of the Lord. Zero in on this. Don't let it pass you by. Don't miss what's being said. Here in this case doesn't mean it's focused hearing. All right, you take your, you got some trouble with your automobile engine. And you take it to a trained auto, auto mechanic, and he can listen to that engine, and he'll hear things you didn't hear. Yeah. Uh -huh. He'll be able to pick up on what, oh, 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 that's a valve. That's a bad valve. That's what that is. 
He'll know. This is the kind of hearing we're talking about here. It's focused hearing so you can see God's will in the thing that's being said. <clears throat> now hear the word of the Lord. God's directing, Amos speaking. He says, thou sayest. Oh. Oh. He's going to, God's going to tell Amaziah what he said. Now, it's amazing how much reference there is to God hearing what people say in Scripture. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a few of these. Here's what, two times, speaking through Moses, God said to Israel, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Two times he said that. I heard it. I heard it. He continued through Ezekiel. Ezekiel 35, 12. I have heard all thy blasphemies. I heard them. Deuteronomy 5.28. I've heard the voice of the words of the people. Said to Jeremiah. I've heard what the prophet said. That prophet I lies in my name. I've heard it. Again through Ezekiel, thus with your mouth ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. I've heard them. Through Zephaniah, God said, I've heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon, whereby they reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. I heard it. I heard it. Now, sometimes words fall out of your mouth that you wish didn't fall out. Yeah. This will help you to deal with it. God heard it. God heard it. You better prevent a response by handling it right. I heard it. Solomon, I spoke to him today. Asked a question. Is he who formed the ear not ear? That's right. Yeah. He, was, he was speaking That's specifically right. about those who who were rejecting God's truth That's and right. speaking against him and acting like I they could do it with impunity. Yeah, I heard it. Hmm. Remember that Paul painted a scenario, he said that a stranger or an unbeliever comes into the assembly when all God's people are to all together in one place at one time, and he comes in, nobody knows this man, but God knows his heart, and he speaks to this man through a whole lot of people to say something, they don't have any idea that it has to do with this man, but he's convicted by what everybody says falls on his face and worships God and says, God's really, really, really here. Yeah. What happened? God heard. Mm -hmm. Amen. God heard. You must learn to rely on a hearing God. Yeah. You will hear things that will, mm -hmm. they'll be upsetting. And you wish that they had more, be a more public hearing because sometimes people say things that nobody will believe you when you tell them what they said. Yeah. It, people won't believe, ah, he wouldn't say anything like that, but you rely on us hearing God. Yes, amen. He hears. When he hears, he acts mm -hmm. That's on right. what he hears. That's it's right. like the man who considered him austere, he said, I'm going to judge you out of your own mouth, I'm going to judge right. you. And that's what he's doing here. That's mm -hmm. right. I've heard. Now here's what you said. God heard it. Here's, prophesy not against Israel. Say, hey, that's what you said. You said that, Amaziah. Now, this is God's word. I heard that. Amos had told Israel, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt. Amaziah speaks up and says, Prophesy not against Israel. <laughs> See, a contradiction. Now, if a person is like a professionally paid preacher, he worries about what the people that pay yeah. thinks about what he said. That's how the system's set up. They, they fully intend for him to think that way. Look, we didn't like what you said. We wish you would not speak anymore on that subject. 
We've got some here that were told, have been told that. Don't speak on that subject anymore. Me, when I was more of a young upstart, I would then preach a series on the subject. <laughs> well, yeah, I did. I'm telling you the truth. So if someone said, we don't like to hear that, then I just preach a long series on it. So he was telling Amos not to speak against Israel and drop not the word against the house of Isaac, which means what, what Amos said was like a word that dropped in their presence they couldn't forget. They, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they remembered it. Said, so don't do that. So that's what you said. That's you said, Amaziah, but now I've got a word from God for you. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, here's for you, Amaziah, yeah. thy wife shall be a harlot in the city. And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land or property will be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of this land. That's what thus saith the Lord. Whew. That's a pretty hard, uh, <laughs> hard saying. <laughs> this is an example. Jesus said, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So here's Amaziah's word, and by his word he was, uh, he was condemned. What about this? Your wife will be a harlot among the people. Some other versions say your wife will become a prostitute in the city. Your wife will be a loose woman in town. Your wife will be a whore. She will play the harlot. She'll go a whoring. And because of your interference, your wife will become a prostitute in this city. Yeah, well, would God do something like that? Well, there it is. What are you going to do with this? Raise it? Amaziah's wife would become to him what Israel had become to God, a spiritual whore. That's what Babylon the Great is called, a great whore. What is a whore, a prostitute, a harlot? What is that? Someone that sells their affection to somebody else. They, if it's a wife, they take an affection that belongs to their husband and they give it to some other man. And some of them will sell it. This is, have you seen this? I mean, this is not like something unusual. It's just that we don't call people like that prostitutes, but they are. They're harlots and prostitutes and whores. That's what they are. Your wife will become that. Now, i give you some texts where God referred to Israel as harlots. How does God feel about that? Amaziah was about to find out. What would it do to you? You married men. What would it do to you? Well, this, this has happened to some of <laughs> Your wife became a harlot. God has feelings, too. God has feelings, too. And it breaks the heart of God when his people play the role of a spiritual harlot and give their hearts to somebody other than to God. Yes, amen. So your wife will become a harlot. That's what I'm going to do for you if we're worshiping other gods. And your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. They're going to be victims of the war. They're going to die violently. They will not die a natural death by the sword. Their lives will be taken from them, like the hearts of the people that have been taken from God. Be, same thing. Remember it said of Absalom, who raised an insurrection against his father David, yeah. Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. In our day, there's been a plundering of the churched youth. That's historically unprecedented. 
and I've tried to find something in history that is like what we are experiencing in our country, and there's nothing like this. An unfaithful church, unwittingly, has produced unfaithful youth. And you're hard pressed to find a youth that young person hasn't given themselves to the culture and blended in with the culture. There's different degrees of it, I understand that, and we're not, you understand what I'm saying. But it's, it's been caused because of an unfaithful church. There's been young people been raised in church and they still can't find the books of the Bible. Raised in church. They don't know the meaning of great terms of scripture like justify, atonement, sanctification. They don't know them. Why not? They've been killed with the sword. Their spiritual lives have been taken from them by professional religious experts, and God has not overlooked this. Amen. We are now in the fourth generation that has not been taught the things of God. The fourth generation. I remember when it all started. It all started with Dr. Spock. You remember that? You remember that old favorite? Started with him. Don't do anything. Don't force children to do anything. And it's continued. It's getting worse, 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 worse. Mm -hmm. Your sons and daughters shall die by the sword. This, it's a judgment. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately, because we're living in the day of salvation, any young person that wants the Lord can find their way out of that mess. Uh -huh. yeah. Be forgiven of their sin. Yes become an example of the believer because we're living in the day of salvation. See, that's why if you was living back here, you wouldn't have a chance. And your, your property is going to be divided by line. Let's say you had 100 acres, we're going to divide it up into one acre plots and, and give it to other people. Why do that? Because that way you'll never be able to get it back together again. Yeah, yeah. See? Yeah. That's the strategy. I'll divide your land by lot, mm -hmm. divide it up, and then you'll never be able to get it back again. Yeah. See, divi in the kingdom of God, division equals destruction. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, people learn to live with division. Huh? Mm -hmm. This is your church. This is my church. This is what you think. This is what I think. They've learned to live with division. But when a people are divided, they are invariably destroyed. Jesus said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's what he said. It can't. House divided against itself. Even Satan's house isn't divided. Satan's united. He knows. He knows, hey, we can't have division among the demons here. We can't have the demons and principalities and powers in disagreement. Even he knows that. That's what Jesus said. If, I, if Satan cast out Satan, because they said Jesus was casting out yeah. demons by the power of Beelzebub. Yeah. If Satan casts out Satan, then the house is divided and his house can't stand. Yeah. Yeah. If it's divided. So they knew unity, real unity, means continuation. Division means destruction. You can't rectify division. People have been trying to do it for, <laughs> for years. They've been trying to get people together that are divided. But here's what they forget. God is the one that causes divisions. Yeah. Like he did at Tower of Babel, remember? Yeah. He caused divisions. That guarantees it can't, that work couldn't continue. Yes. When he divided the... The building stopped. Yeah, amen. That's what happened in Christendom. Yes. Yeah, amen. Yep. Professed Christians begin diddling around yeah. with the things of God. They begin to like the circuses that Rome introduced. 
and a division. Their hearts became divided, and God divided the people. Well, the people call them denominations. God did that, just like he did at Babel, because they were building themselves instead of the kingdom of God. So he divided it, and once it's divided, the building stops, and that's, that's why America is the only continent in the world in which Christianity is not growing. Everybody knows it. it it's knowledgeable. It's a documented sort of thing. Churches are closing up. For every mega church, there's 50 that close up. Maybe more, maybe hundreds now. What is that? That's division. That's God. Dividing the land by line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's a little difficult for some to receive, so maybe we'll proceed on. But that, that is the way it is. And as for you, Amaziah, you're going to die in a polluted land, a Gentile land. You're not going to die in Judah or in Israel. You're going to die in a polluted land, <coughs> which is one of the ultimate uh, insults. All of this would be so personalized to Amaziah that remind, it would remind him to the day of his death the penalty for contradicting God. Yes, amen. And as for Israel, <laughs> they will go into captivity. And they did. Moved, they were moved into exile. And Israel never has got out of exile. To this day, Judah, two tribes of Judah, they got back into the promised land. And that's where Nehemiah came in and Ezra and they came back, but the ten tribes never has, never to this day have gotten back. And they call, refer to the lost ten tribes. That's what the, but the Bible doesn't call them the lost ten tribes. They're the scattered tribes. Huh? And when they were divided, the nation went, as they would say, kaput. That's what division does. A lot of God's people have died in a strange land. They've died in a strange land. You want to make it your aim not to. Yeah. Amen. Not to ever take a position having to do with God. That's wrong. Yeah. Amen. You've got to have confidence. You've got to have confidence that you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And if, if you don't, then just... I don't say anything on that subject, but seek wisdom from God. Ask God to help you. you you've got to be right. When you talk for God, you've got to be right. Yes, amen. You can't be wrong. Amaziah is your proof of this. Can't be wrong. And when someone says, we don't want to hear that anymore, just give them a double dose. That's the way these things are. Now, this we've. I'll close with this. This is a whole text is a classic enactment of this word by Isaiah. Isaiah 55, 11. The word of the Lord is gone forth, and it will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that yes. wherein he sent it. That's, you're seeing that in this text here. It actually happens. So, that word applies to good promises, but it applies to judgments, too. Yes, amen. That's the conclusion of the seventh chapter, but it's heating up. Yes, <laughs> Book Amos is heating up. Yes. And it's for, it's yeah. for our learning. This is for our learning. Yes. That's yeah. good. So you can see how, how there's behind the scenes, the scenes, God moves this man to speak this way to the prophet and the prophet comes out with this strong yes. word. Yes. He, he provoked him. Yes, right. Now the, the truth was the truth. I mean it, this was the judgment of God but how it came out was orchestrated by God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Brother Rick. We also take away from this the importance of what we say. Yeah. yeah, that's right. God, yes. has, God has brought judgments against men on the basis of what they've done, but he's also brought judgments yeah. against men on the basis of what they said. That's right. Like uh, 
or a steer man. <laughs> the Israel Israelites who murmured in the wilderness, yeah. they spake against God. Korah and his rebels, yeah. they spoke against Moses. See, even even Miriam. That's right. Because of what she said. Yes, that's right. Herod, because of what he didn't say. Remember, he didn't give glory uh -huh. to God. Yes. And sometimes God takes that personal. It's what they didn't say. What they should have said, but they didn't say. And so we see by this, see, not, it's not only just serious what a man does, it's serious what a man that's says. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. By thy words. Yes. Yes. I appreciated your point about this being an example of not meditating before what you'll answer in that mm -hmm. time. It's critical. Yeah. It's a critical time that the Lord brings to you. Uh, of it being... The prophet's experience and prior preparation that was employed in the bringing of this answer. The, the Lord was using his spirit to direct him in the things that he'd already been plowing in mm -hmm. to bring forth this answer. That's right. He was considering certain vessels that you have to prepare a certain way before they're ready for use. And so it's not this mindless uh, <coughs> employment, so to speak, that you mentioned of answering, but it's... <coughs> being prepared for the master's use by That's meditating right. mm -hmm. and using your mind and, and plowing in the things of the Lord beforehand so that you're mm -hmm. ready when the time comes. That's right. Amen. There's a difference between Balaam's ass uh -huh. yeah. and a real prophet. Yes. He, he, he used the ass's mouth. Uh-huh. But he uses your mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Famous his answer, he defends his calling, but he doesn't defend himself. Yeah, very good. So in, uh -huh. a, in his own in, in his own capacity, or, the, or as much as he could, he made his calling an election sure. Yes. He, he, had, he had this conviction and made this conclusion that God had called him and God had sent him. So it, if, if he had gone of his own volition, of his own choice, this word from, from this man would have, would have done him in. Would, mm -hmm. have, would have actually sent him away, yeah. or, or could have, likely. But Amos didn't say... I've made great sacrifice, and and this isn't easy, and you shouldn't talk to me that way. He just he just tells the man the calling that that God had, had given, him, and that's why he wasn't moved. And again, it's very very much like the answer that Paul gave. Paul didn't yeah. make it a personal issue when the Jews confronted him. He didn't say, "Now this is very offensive to me, and you should." It wasn't a personal issue. It was yeah. about the calling God gave us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anyone else tonight? Brother Gibbon? Yes. It's, it's just amazing that Amaziah was a priest. Yeah. A priest of God. Mm -hmm. It's a pattern throughout Scripture. You'll find that some of the fiercest opposition that came yeah. to people yeah. who were trying to speak for God, it came from religious leaders. That's right. Uh -huh. Religious people, Jesus, his the people that wanted to kill him were the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. The people that chased Paul all over the ancient world, yeah. those were the the Jews, the religious the religious Jews. It's a pattern that you you experience this if you if you ever really try to speak for God. Uh, most of the time, the 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 fiercest opposition will come yeah. from religious people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not, not from pagans. No, you're right. From religious people. I like think yeah. the pagans will be more tolerant of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. these yeah. Right. Right, man. Mm. All right, we'll close there. <clears throat>